Good morning again, everyone, and happy Easter to everyone. It's good to be with you. As uh, we gather today, this second or this day, this uh, weekend after Easter is, all, is considered Mercy Sunday. And it was declared in the year 2000 by St. John Paul II um, as a feast that we should celebrate. Um, go to confession here, you don't mind, do you? I, uh, I could not understand why we were dealing with mercy after Easter. I was always into alleluias. <laughs> Jesus is risen, you know, alleluia. We need to celebrate this life everlasting that the Lord has opened up to us. And so I refused, as a pastor, I refused to celebrate Mercy Sunday. I wouldn't do it. Um, I wouldn't, uh, there's, in the opening prayer, the word mercy is found, and that's the only mercy word, time the people heard mercy from me. And so I did that for many, many years, um, since the year 2000. And finally, just in more recent time, as I dwelt more fully on the readings of this weekend, um, I changed my mind at least in part, because the mercy part, I always felt that belonged in the Lent. You know, that's Lenten theme very much. You know, God dying on it, Jesus dying on a cross, and his mercy there for having, uh, giving us forgiveness of our sins and so on. And so Lent and Holy Week, to me, um, were the real mercy times. And now we're celebrating resurrection and a new life, an everlasting life. But as I looked at these readings in more recent time, I began to see an, another theme about mercy. It wasn't just about Ralph Gross and God and the mercy God has for me. That was very much in my life, uh, in my understanding at least, that is what's borne out and lived out and experienced in the Lenten season and in Holy Week. What I found in the readings was another dimension of mercy, and it was the call of the Lord for you and me to be merciful to others. It's to extend that mercy of the Lord that now that we have been born through the Paschal mystery of the dying and rising of Jesus and given this whole new dimension of life, we are called by Christ to share that mercy that he has given us that I experienced in the Lenten season and Holy Week that he has given me this mercy that I might give and be merciful to other people around me. And I found that in these readings as we look at the gospel, for example. And in that gospel, you've got um, Jesus coming first of all and saying, peace be with you. And that peace be with you is, you know, your sins are forgiven, yes, um, but you have, and you have nothing to fear. Be at peace. You know, have that in your own hearts. And he mentions that twice in his first visit, and then again in the second visit when Thomas was there. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And there is probably the clearest declaration that as we are filled with the goodness, the graciousness, the grace, the uh, mercy of God, we now, as I have been sent to you, I now ask you to go forth and live these same characteristics of your life. Because one of the characteristics, chief characteristics of our life, is mercy. Just as you look at Jesus' mission, if you stop and think, what was all of what he did? What was that all about? Why did he come? What was the climax, ultimately, of his life? It was the dying on that cross and then the resurrection following it. That was what he came for. 
He did all of his preaching and teaching and miracles and so on. The miracles weren't why he came. He came to die and to rise and to be raised by the Father. And so in our life, you know, what is our mission? We have many different things that we're called to do. Live the commandment of loving God with all your heart and loving your neighbor, you know, in a similar way. And then one of the dimensions and characteristics of our life is to be merciful as God is to us. So I send you forth. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. He said that, you know, to the disciples. And whose sins you forgive, um, they are forgiven. And again, that's a whole, that forgiveness is a whole reality of mercy demonstrated. Uh, and we're called to live and to practice in our life, to be forgiving. So he gives us that power. He gives us power to be merciful, to forgive. Jesus breathed on them, it says in that text today. He breathed on them, filling them with his spirit. And so he wanted his very own life and character to dwell within us. And what an incredible gift. And it is gift. You and I do not earn, we do not deserve, <laughs> you know, all of these things from the Lord. And yet we have been given these graces and these powers and this call and all the support we need to go out and live a much more um, rich, enriched life. Um, and God makes that happen and we are the recipients of it and it's all gift. It's his love for us, you know, that he pours out to us. And so we are so very, very blessed. Being instruments, you know, we talk about faith. You saw the Thomas story there, all about faith, you know. And I don't believe he ever, you know, it doesn't really say in the scripture that he did put his fingers into the nail prints. And it doesn't say he put his hand into Jesus' side, even though Jesus invited him to do that. He came to his belief. He saw you know, Jesus' victory over his sufferings and his death, and he believed. And you and I, in our life, when we realize God's mercy poured out to us, hopefully our belief increases. Hopefully it becomes more real. Hopefully it becomes more firm, <laughs> you know, as we go on through our daily life. But as you and I live the characteristic, the virtue of mercy in our lives toward other people, others become believers. So you are so essential to the mission of Christ. We are so essential to the mission of Christ as we pour out mercy toward other people and forgive and care about and serve others. They become believers. They see Christ in us, that spirit he breathed into us, you know, lived out by us. Now they see it. They understand it. They believe in that Christ because of you and me. Don't ever underestimate how much the Lord is counting on you every day every day and in so many different circumstances and a lot of them involve that mercy that first reading i love that first reading because it's so idealistic you know that the community lived for one another those that had helped those who had not you know the haves and the have nots we have that in our society I went out to dinner last night with Dave uh, and his wife, Therese, and uh, they, after mass, and w Dave said to me, and you know, he's been in the world of finances and stuff in his life, and he's tuned into a lot of these things, and he said, you know, Father, there just isn't a middle class anymore. 
You know, it's becoming more and more upper class, the haves and the have nots. And it's gotten much more distinct that way than it was 30, 40 years ago. Um, and so as we live our lives and have these, the haves and the have nots, <laughs> and much many, much more of that, and a, a dissolving of that middle class, um, there's a greater need now today, is the point. A greater need for us to live that epistle, that Acts of the Apostles reading, how those who had shared with those who have not. And uh, it says how they shared all these things in common, and especially for the needy, you know, who received from the others. And then it uses the example of how people would even sell what they had, those that were the haves, <laughs> people, they sold many things that they had and put the money at the feet of the apostles and the apostles then would share that with the needy. And you do that here as a community in so many different ways. Um, I don't know if Dave tells you this or Father Joe, but uh, Dave told me last night at supper, I hope he doesn't get upset with me uh, revealing this, but he said, this is such a generous community at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. It's such a generous community. And um, that's what we need to live. We need to help make happen <laughs> what's talked about in that epistle from the Acts of the Apostles and how this all became something they lived and shared in common. So thank God for his mercy in your life but then live and exercise that mercy uh, in turn for others. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're all about. And that's how faith will continue to grow in our life and the lives of those we help. <laughs>